Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics, and we are moving straight to the election that is coming up in a few days' time. Now, ahead of the election, Governor Godwin Obaseki of the PDP and Osage Izeyamu of the All Progressive Congress APC have signed a peace pact, pledging their commitment to violence-free election and to accepting results. And finally, APC Chieftain Bola Tinumbu speaks on the upcoming election. He has stated that Obaseki does not deserve a single vote and has called on a state voters to reject him. Joining us to put more light on this is Stanley Imaro, a legal practitioner, and I must say, for the purpose of this conversation, also an APC member. Uh, we are expecting that uh, our PDP uh, guest will join us in this conversation, but we will continue to uh, wait and see whether we join us. Good evening, Stanley. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, good to have you. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Okay, let's start with uh, the latest. And some would say, which one is stronger? What happened at the Albert's Palace and what happened today? Uh, I could not hear you very well, please. I'm saying that what is the, what's the difference? Which one is stronger in terms of commitment to whatever they've done? What happened at the Obers Palace some weeks ago and what happened today in terms of peace pact? Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, what uh, transpired today at the peace pact was a mere continuation of uh, what the respected the royal father initiated on the 2nd of September. You could see the disposition of the major two contenders uh, on that particular day. And of course, their disposition today it was quite salutary with what we have seen thus far. It is hope that the election indeed will be very peaceful. You will recall that in the history of uh, a dual election, we have recorded peaceful uh, outcome. There have not been violent per se despite the political grandstanding that would ordinarily uh, follow the electionary campaign. At the end of the day, elections are usually conducted in a very peaceful and conducive uh, atmosphere in those states. And I assure you, this particular one, scheduled for 19th of September, will not be an exception. OK. Uh, uh, Stanley, I, 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 I like your optimism. and. Uh... Maybe we share the same sentiment, and you, I will, I'll tell you why. I remember covering an election about eight years ago when uh, uh, Oshomole was seeking a re-election. The tension was so much that quite a lot of people were so scared, and it went very, very free. But quoting the new, I mean, talking about the, the Oba of Bini now, he said the tension had never been like this probably knows what both of us do not know. Yeah, uh, I agree with you largely, but you must understand that uh, uh, the circumstances we found ourselves is different from the circumstances you earlier referred to. In that, uh, during that particular period, the social media was not this vibrant. And today, uh, in the comfort of your living room, you could be projecting your submissions, contribution to national and state discourse. Everyone literally has the voice at the moment. So I, I want to believe that that accounts for the semi volatile nature of the campaign. It, as a matter of fact, the controversy on social media tend to be very violent. But you know, they are intellectual based violence. And we've only seen situations where people take pictures of things that ordinarily in the past would not have been captured. So when you put these two situations uh, side by side, you will say the difference is the time we have found ourselves today. Not necessarily because we've not had this level of political tension. Electionary campaigns usually tension soak. But at the end of the day, I assure you, and God willing, that everything we pan out where. Okay. And then the loser and the winner we we congratulate ourselves. Yeah, I hope your words, on. I hope your words will truly be on the marble to say that you said this and it went this way. But let's 
come to the accusation made by PDP against APC, and by APC, I'm mentioning names now. Um, PDP alleged that there is a clandestine move by the national leader of APC, that's uh, Senator Bola Chinumbu, of uh, sponsoring talks to disturb the process. That's a, a worrisome allegation. And he also mentioned that he's doing it in connivance with the former national leader. Could, this, could there be some kind of uh, smoke, or do you think the fire had no smoke at all? I, I would say, from a operational experience, and even from your own personal experience, having covered the uh, elections for many years, you know too well that the first victim in the electionary campaign is truth, often time, especially allegations of uh, rigging, counter-rigging, plans to rig, plans to counter-rig, and all that. So, of course, the opposing parties who always want to say, look, you are planning to rig. Why the other one will re re respond that you are equally planning to rig? Uh, for me, the allegation is bogus, outrightly bogus, uh, because uh, there are no verifiable evidence to that effect. Uh, politicians tend to make wide allegations, you know, okay. during elections. So that's quite understandable. Why you are doing something sinister, you will always assume that the opposing party equally is planning something sinister. So that is just the, the attitude. But in reality, these are some of these allegations are fictional. I, I sincerely hope that uh, they are just mere allegations. And they are dear to and, I, and I think I like the attitude. I like the attitude you are taking it. So, okay, we will take a short break. We want to bring in another person to join us in the conversation. Please, don't go away. <music> Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics, and we are staying uh, doing countdown to a dual state governorship election. Yeah, before we went on that break, uh, we had uh, uh, Stanley Imaro, a legal practitioner, and also a member of APC. Interestingly, we are being joined with another strong member of APC. Uh, I don't know, maybe tomorrow we we'll would dedicate some time for PDP to have their say on this issue. Mr. Henry Dagbon is the former Commissioner for Justice in Edo State. So let me uh, start with you as we resume. Uh, Mr. Dagbon, there have been quite a lot of uh, serious allegations against your party uh, from the fact that uh, it is said that um, uh, the national leader is inviting some talks. And we also heard about the national chairman, the former national chairman, also working in connivance to make the state quite heated. Uh, let me quickly have your response to that before we go into other issues. Well, those are all uh, spurious allegations. I am in a state. I have been out all day campaigning at different periods, at uh, various markets uh, in Benin City. Everywhere is cool and calm. Uh, we have been blessed today by showers from heaven. And I want to take this opportunity to really thank the security agencies. They've been around the ground for the past three or so days. And through their show of force, even petty criminals and uh, serious criminals not related to elections, they have uh, taken cover. So nobody is importing any talks. If anybody, if they are raising such allegations, then you know that that is what they are planning to do. With the APC, we don't need any talk to win the election. This election is uh, done and dusted. I believe that uh, by Saturday we will be victorious. And I'd like to take this public opportunity to advise the handlers of Governor Obaseki. They should make available for him at least two medical doctors, two cardiologists, by Sunday morning. I am confident that no adult doctor will attend to him because he doesn't need doctors. Barista, that you see. can't use that opportunity to do that now. You can't use that. We just signed a peace pact today, and we want a very, very, very civil language. So that what I'm we, saying is not a, is not a breach of the peace pact. It's not belligerent. But, I'm only but, advising but, but it is, that doctors should but be But it is insulting. Back. 
Because that part is But it is insulting. It is insulting. It, I, I can I can that understand that you want to make a joke out of it. But let's just stay with the issues. I beg you, please. So I, 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 I'll come back to you in a, in a while. Uh, Imaro, let's, let's also look at um, what the feedback is. Uh, I understand that there's been some kind of uh, unease in some parts of the state that there's been series of kidnapping, even underreported. Uh, it, does this have anything to do with the upcoming election? Well, thank you very much for this uh, uh, particular line of question. I can assure you that governors, in terms of security in those days, has collapsed. For months now, the governor appears to be more interested in his re-election than the security of life and properties. In particular, a door center is currently not accessible. Many of our leaders in APC have been kidnapped. Uh, if you are going home, you begin to wonder, will I get home successfully? Will I not be uh, intercepted by road by uh, kidnappers? Everyone is living in fear. In the city here, Bini City, of course, when you look at things, you will say, yes, there's security of life and property here. Step out of Bini City. You are almost on your own. All the link roads to land. you have kidnappers everywhere. Okay. I can name names, but there's no time on our part. <laughs> we want to appeal. That in spite of the very high uh, desire of the governor to be re-elected, of course, uh, by September uh, 19, you know that that is not uh, a possibility because the man that will be the governor is P.I. He should, the governor should, as a matter of fact, okay. protect Okay. Uh, the citizens of Edo State. Okay. The kidnappers have literally taken over Stanley, the that's, role of Edo Central. That, that's a worrying uh, situation, and we hope that uh, um, we will actually put politics aside and attend to the issue of governance. Mr. Ida Agbon, le let me also get your take. What's the feedback you're getting from your campaign? Um, is it favorable? You have opportunity to give us a very, very sincere feedback now. Well, my... My honest opinion is that this election is a done deal. It's been won and it's been lost. I told you, you can see my voice is strained already because I've been on the streets. And uh, the reception is overwhelming. And it's so easy to achieve because of the lack of performance or no performance of the governor. Everywhere we go to, and thank God the rates are falling now, when the rain falls, it's like the breeze blowing, and then you see the anus of the, of the fire. <laughs> the roads are bad. Everywhere is flooded. A Kewan Road, which is a major road in metropolitan Benicity, is abandoned. It's like a road they throw a bomb on. So it's very easy to, to, to convince the people. You don't need to okay. be labeled the issues. They know the issues. Market women know that all the markets bond, they make promises, they never redeemed. The hospitals are not there. Somebody took a video of the central hospital today when it was raining. So they, 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 it's a done deal. I expect a, a last slide, six slide victory on, the, on, on Saturday. You have uh, cautioned me not to advise. So I will not advise, <laughs> but I thought the man needs advice, but I keep my thank advice Thank you, thank you friend. for giving the advice. Uh, okay. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, <laughs> Barrister Henry Itahabgo, former commissioner of, um, um, former commissioner for justice in Edo State. Thank you for that little contribution you made, and thank you for sticking to my advice not to advise. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Stanley Maro, for your time, for your, unless I want to advise that you keep safe, Let's hope that uh, the election will be won, will be lost, and uh, the winner, the loser, will embrace themselves genuinely. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Yes, and to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take on this issue. Please don't go anywhere. And here is my take. The Peace Pact signed by the Edo State Governorship election candidates 
is laudable, but like Bishop Kuka of the Archdiocese of Sokoto warned, I honestly hope the signing of the peace accord isn't a mere ceremony, end of quote, and is adhered to. How to adhere to it? Have the interests of the electorate, the people of Edo State, and their welfare at heart. I believe that all of these electoral violence, vote buying, voter intimidation stems from selfishness, a very terrible vice. Selfishness, hunger for power, and greed. The people who made a real difference on the world, the Desmond Tutu, the Martin Luther King Jr., the Mother Teresas of this world, the Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, and others, had the interests of the people and the nation at heart. So to our leaders today, especially those in a dose state, as you plan for Saturday, examine your hearts and make a decision to take steps that will only profit your words. And the United States imposing a visa restrictions. This is actually laughable because there are almost 200 countries in the world. And I think these perpetrators will leave without setting foot in the United States. But let's see whether this will also be a big lesson for them. I know it's not your country, so there is a limit to what the U.S. Embassy can do. But if you want to cause major change in the country, I really believe there are other ways to go about this. For instance, offer to handle security and some polling areas in the future. The violence will be reduced if more security is provided. And that's my take tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time on this st station. I am Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now.